It's daily life. Sometimes God is so involved in my life that it becomes humorous because a lot of what I do in ministry, I run into people that either have been a Christian a long time or they have a, a doctorate or they have a degree or they have some type of religious upbringing that you would think that if I said to them, well, you know, God is real and you need to have a personal relationship with him, that God wants to talk to you and that God can speak to you audibly as well as in his word and that he can be real he can appear at any time if he chooses to that the person would automatically accept that and go well yeah of course you know god could god could appear jesus could appear in our midst you know because he did that in the book of acts and he's done that throughout history and there are different times of people that have said that they talked to god and they've heard his voice and that they have been some of them burned at the stake for it others you know have Likewise, given testimonies of seeing Jesus or you know, being in some way connected and talking to him, that they would relate to what I share or compare notes and say, well, yeah, of course, you know, but then we also want to prove it according to scripture. So just in case, you know, people have gotten off on tangents because some people have followed angels and started like the Mormon church or some people have followed some other quote-unquote Jesus has started the Sun and Moon Church, you know, or the Moonies. But in reality, when you come into contact with a personal living God, there is no doubt, as Paul did. Paul was knocked off his horse, was literally hearing God speak to him, and those around him couldn't hear the same thing he heard. So at some point in time, I relate to these people and I ask them, well, you know, does God talk to you? And, you know, shouldn't we, you know, be focused in on that? Like helping people to develop more of a personal relationship so that they have the ability to know God and to hear his voice and to walk with him and to know him. And yet I get these answers back that are always religious. Well, you know, you should go to church. And you should be submitted to the elders, and you should be doing this and doing that. Well, those are nice things, and I agree with them in principle. But while I do them, I count on God personally talking to me, then elders and deacons and you know pastors and leaders being my authority. Because I don't need a pope, and I don't need a pastor. I need Jesus. Because you see, we were given the Holy Spirit to teach us. All of us are meant to learn, not to go do our own thing, but to recognize that the balance of religion and relationship has to be equal as a just scale before the Lord, because he holds them in the balance, and they are equal. There is a certain place for religion that is real if it's compounded with a relationship in Jesus, because he causes the two to balance out in our life, to unveil what he has for the church, as well as what he has for you personally. You see, one is corporate, one is personal. Again, a balance. So, I'm shocked sometimes that people don't recognize that they need to focus and zero in with a microscope. The very fact that God wants to talk to you, the very necessity that you have to hear Jesus speak, the very reality that God is real, he's alive, he speaks in the midst of us with his word at times in the scriptures, at times in the circumstance, at times in the coincidences, at times in the audible, at times in the physical, at times in revelation. It's beautiful to go to worship services and to enjoy that and to feel the corporate experience that can hype you and make you experience things you might not have experienced alone, maybe. But the reality is, is that at some point in time, God could take you in the palm of his hand, lift you up into heaven and speak to you personally, one-on-one, -on -one, as he did with Paul. So, seek to know the Lord, not religion. Religion will come because God will infuse it into you as you are obedient to him. But seek to know Jesus in a personal and intimate way, and all these things will be added unto you. 
Happy is the man that finds wisdom, and the man that gets understanding. Whoso findeth me, finds life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. He that has the Son has life, and he who has not the Son of God has not life. That is a principle from 1 John that we know we're saved because we know that Jesus is in us. Not because we accept it by faith or we put something there that we believe, but because Jesus said so. So if he told you that, then you know it. Whether you feel it or not isn't important. The fact is that he spoke it to you. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord. Do you understand and know Jesus? Do you? Can you talk to him today and ask him in a personal way? When circumstances go against you or the church seems to go in a different direction and you don't know what to do and you you got too many voices in your head, can you put them all aside? Can you set aside the time? Can you walk today and talk today to Jesus himself and have him lead your way? That's why we have devotions. Because God will speak to you in a personal, intimate way. He will reveal to you what you need today. Because He loves you. <laughs> he really does. He's not going to leave you out there hanging. In matter of fact, he told you in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 to trust in the Lord with all your heart, to lean not in your own understanding. Because that's easy to do. But in all your ways acknowledge him, then he would direct your path. So we don't figure it out, but we trust him. So we don't figure it out, but we acknowledge him, and he'll do what? He directs your path. Think about that for a while. What things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Jesus. Yes, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. If you are in a situation and you aren't learning about Jesus, and you have a good job, or you have a good car, or you have a good life, but you don't know God. Leave it. Go find where it is that you will get to know Jesus better. Find that place that somehow God says, I am here. And you might have to leave stuff behind. Because it's more important that you have salvation than it is that you have all the things of the world and don't have Jesus. Because if you find yourself on the day that God takes his church away, where you find yourself on the day of judgment without Jesus, you will be cast into a lake of fire. You will perish eternally in torment because you're corrupted and you need salvation. You need that relationship that Jesus gives you for without it, you will die forever and ever and ever. But if you have a relationship with him, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. Christ Jesus is made to, unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. See, with Jesus, if you have him, you have wisdom. Bingo. You have righteousness. You have sanctification and you have redemption. That's all you need for eternal life. He that winneth souls is wise. Poor, yet making many rich. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. Of his fullness have we received grace for grace. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. I see people beg, I see people ask, I see people sneakily get little gimmicks to get money and to get 
provisions and to get everything done for them, when the reality is they can do it without it. God can provide. And he has. My life is a testimony of that. Everything we've done is free. <laughs> Freedom we've received, freedom we gave. And the Lord always provided more. Even when we had our car blow up just a few days ago, God is providing and we're getting a new car that we needed. That we knew the time was coming to buy a new car. So when it exploded, literally, blew a head gasket and can't take care of it, can't fix it, and don't have the opportunities here in this place, God said, what are you worried about? I provided it. I took it away. Now I'm providing a new car. And when it's time, I will take it away. And so it's your life that you've been given. Since he gave it to you, grace for grace, should you not give the same to others? Grace for grace, mercy for mercy, love for love, and forgiveness for forgiveness? Hath God not chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom that he hath promised to them that love him? Not many wise men after the flesh, and not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. When we started this ministry in sharing the devotionals that God inspired me in my life all these 35 plus years, I knew that I had something unique at the end of my life that I didn't know at the beginning of my life that a lot of people didn't have, which was Jesus in me. That I figured everyone heard God speak, everyone talked to Jesus. I thought literally that you were wiser than I, that I was the weakest of faithful believers, that as a Jesus freak, I was like the, the smallest of the small, the, the most minuscule, because everyone else was so knowledgeable and gone to church, new church history, new church doctrine, knew all these dogmas and doctrines and things that I thought was, wow, ecclesiology sounds so wonderful. Wouldn't it be great, Lord, to know it? And the Lord never let me get into it as much as I know now. And I am very well versed in my, my hermeneutic and homiletic and drash and you name it. But in my relationship, he gave that to me in such a personal, intimate way that always, through all the days of my life, I was able to walk with Jesus and find him when I needed him. And not just in need, but gradually in blessing too. That even when I was comfortable, in my poverty, that I could find him still meeting me in the morning, or in the evening, or at noon, and all through the day. And when I called upon him, he always answered me, because he loved me. And you know, when you put it in a nutshell, your eternal life isn't about the fact that you're going to physically die and then live forever. Your eternal life is getting to know Jesus forever to get to know him in such a way that you become one with the Father and the Son. That by his Spirit, we set aside all the ugliness that we are, the sinfulness, the flesh, the gut, that so easily besets us. And we move into the purity of what love really is. Because God is love. And he wants you today to know that he loves you and he wants to walk with you. And he wants to talk with you. And if he is, then move on with him in a more intimate way. Don't go out and build some giant cathedral to the sky that's going to burn up soon. But rather, get to know Jesus in such a way that when he does come knocking at you door and he says, It's time to go. Let's go. You just walk out the door and you don't look behind you because you know that everything you could have done in this world, you've done. Every person you could have shared with, you share. And that when the time is here, you're not listening for the sound of the trumpet. You're not worried about the rapture. You're not worried about whether you're ready or not. You just know that the knock at your door, you open the door, and you walk out into heaven with him. Because he just might send an angel to pick you up. He just might send someone to just kind of take you walking right up into the sky. He just might rapture you before you least expect it in a way you don't really know how he will do it.
Oh, to us, it may look like in the twinkling of an eye, you vanished, if we were still here. But for you, it may look like something different. Because when you step from one dimension, the physical, into the spiritual dimension, how would you describe it? Transformed in the twinkling of an eye. And they vanished. They were caught up. They were snatched away. They were rescued. Get to know Jesus today. Not because this year is the day of salvation. Although if you die from physical death, it is for you, the rapture. But because Jesus is coming soon, and that this generation will not pass away until all these things are fulfilled, I can tell you, it may not be 2011 or 12, but from that moment on, you should be prepared every day to see your Lord as you walk with Him today, as you talk with Him and prepare to see Jesus. Get ready. He is coming soon.